we all adopt a reverent posture as we talk to God in prayer. Our God and our Father in heaven, we pause today to praise and to magnify your matchless name because your name is the greatest name that heaven and earth has ever known. This morning we come as little children, returning thanks and praise to you for the many favors you bestowed upon our lives. We are forever grateful for the cross and for what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. And even as we come, O oh God, this morning, we beg for mercy, we beg for grace, we ask for forgiveness for our failures and for our shortcomings. We're thankful for this opportunity of worship. And as we worship you, O oh Father, today, wherever we are, in the comfort of our homes, those who are worshiping in their homes, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to tabernacle with us that we may worship you in spirit and in truth and in so doing receive that blessing we stand in need of. We pray dear God that through this platform and as your word is proclaimed today by your man servant that lives will be transformed hearts will be touched and souls will be saved for your eternal kingdom anoint dear father your man servant once more with a double portion of your holy spirit as that in the form of pastor charles as that he speak O oh god your word ears will be open and hearts will be receptive to your truths we pray, dear God, that your word would go forth today with clarity and with power. And at the end of it, lives will never be the same again. Father, we pray that our worship today will not be in vain. But at the end of our worship session today, may our lives, O oh God, be richly blessed. And may our souls be drawn even closer to our Savior and redeemer jesus christ father remember at this time O oh god those who are dealing with some health challenge those who might be battling with some sickness or health issue we pray dear god on their behalf as they reach out O oh god today in faith and claim healing in their bodies that through the power of your Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you will heal, O oh God, the sick, and restore complete health. We pray, dear God, for families who are hurting, that you will heal families also. We pray for nations around the world that are hurting, that you will heal nations from whatever issue or issues they might be dealing with. And dear Father, most important of all, we ask in all world that you would save us all when you come for your eternal kingdom. Please hear and answer our humble prayer this morning, we ask in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. As we continue to worship the Lord, I invite you to take your Bibles. Uh, uh, it's always good to get into the Word of the Lord. It doesn't matter if you have it on your iPad, or your tablet, your phone, uh, whether you have it in hard copy. We want you to find Hebrews, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 12, and we will be reading from the Word of God this morning. Indeed, God, Word, give us, uh, in inspire us. And once we read the word of God, we will be richly blessed. 
Hebrews. Chapter 12, and I will be reading from verse 1 to 6. The Word of God says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such controversy of sin against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. He have not yet risen unto blood, striving against sin, and he have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor the faith when nor faint when thou art rebuke of him, for who the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and sojourn every son whom he receiveth. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. At this time, we will introduce Sister Janet Phillips, who will sing for us a special item of music.
wonderful indeed. I was blessed. I know that you have been blessed as well. And today God has got a special message for us. It's coming from a young man. God's mouthpiece for us today. He's going to break the bread of life to us today. I know that you're going to just stay focused and listen as Pastor Michael Charles delivers the word of God. Now as we as we meditate solemnly and quietly on that on that wonderful verse break thou the bread of life i want to tell you something about pastor michael charles pastor michael charles is a young man secondly he's not just a young man but he's a young man with a passion and not only is he young with a passion but he has a desire to share the word of god now for some time now he has been in the business of helping planting churches and with the aid of the Holy Spirit he is actually being appointed to oversee seven churches on the Upper East Bank District. I want you to just uh, to open your hearts and your minds as Pastor Michael Charles brings to us today a wonderful message straight from God's throne room and I'm sure that you're going to be blessed and you're going to be able to share this uh, share this with somebody share this with some neighbor share this with some individual who needs uh, to have a blessing from God bless your hearts as Pastor Michael Charles brings to us uh, that message at this time Thank you very much, Elder Greenwich, my elder and friend, for your kind words of introduction. It's such a blessing to be able to present God's word in this capacity on this Sabbath. I'm grateful for the invitation from uh, Pastor Dr. Patterson, uh, one of my uh, mentors in ministry. And I'm so grateful that God can uh, use him and the members here in the Lower East Bank District to uh, put together uh, such a wonderful program uh, during this lockdown. I give God praise and thanks for life and an opportunity uh, to praise His name and to share God's Word. And it is my prayer that as we examine God's Word today, that we all be drawn into a closer relationship with Jesus. Uh, if you are close uh, to your Bibles, I want to invite you as we revisit our scripture reading. As we revisit our scripture reading, Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to read in your hearing from verse 1 right on to 6. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 1 right on to 6. The Word of God says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint 
in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the law, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. This morning I want to speak to you from the topic, keep running. Keep running. Bow your heads with me as I pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful for your love and your mercy. Father, I am nothing but dust and a broken vessel, but you are my potter. So fix me, O oh God, and speak to your people. I pray, O oh Father, that everyone listening may have a desire to serve God, to serve God in spirit and in truth. Do for us more than we can do for ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Keep running. A few years ago, I attended what we call a day of sports for the churches. I remember that there was a particular race in which I had a friend who was running. I was cheering him on. I knew that he was on his last two laps. His other friends were cheering him on. With the crowd standing in front of me, I can merely see my friend running. I took my eyes off of the race. I recognize that my friend is no longer running. I've, I was asking those next to me, did you see my friend who was in this race? It, it, it was to be his final lap, but he was nowhere to be found on the track. After that race would have ended, I found him at the end of the day. I said, my brother, what happened? He said, well, the, the heat of the day was so much that I couldn't keep running. So when I reached near the exit, I decided to come off the track just to be in the cool. In the he would have received a prize. Even if he had fallen on the track. Had he fallen on the track. Someone might have come to his aid. Encouraging him to continue the race. My dear friends today. The Bible tells us of a race. Paul, having an experience of the Olympics in ancient Greek, like a good preacher, to use analogies of the day to bring spiritual implication. It is this Paul who decided that he is going to persecute Christians. It's this Paul while he was on his way to Damascus, decided that he, as he goes on his way to Damascus, that he would put Christians into prison. This Paul, that journey, who consented the death of Stephen, this Paul, as he journeyed to Damascus, met Jesus 
In fact, Jesus met him. Jesus said to Paul, listen, you cannot beat me. You cannot defeat my purpose. In fact, I'm not going to destroy you, Paul, but I'm going to use you as a vessel to, to carry the good news to the Gentiles. It is this Paul who has been converted to all the world. Paul says, wherefore, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about so great a cloud of witness. Paul used the word seeing to suggest that you, you ought to have spiritual eyes to see what he was telling you before. Stay with me, somebody. Paul says, wherefore seeing are in we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Paul is referring to the chapter before. He has a list who would have run the race before. He talked about the faith of Abel, that he was able to offer the correct sacrifice, but he died in the race. He made reference to Enoch, but he was translated during the race. He talked about Noah, for Noah had preached that a flood would come, but he died during the race. The Bible tells me that Abraham was running the race, that, that Moses was running the race, Isaac ran the race, and Joseph, as he was so excited about the race, that before he died, he said, take my bones to the promised land. Paul list, uh, talked about Jacob. He talked about the faithful servants, those who believed in God, those who knew that this world is not their own. He talked about the saints who understood that they are just pilgrims passing through. Paul made a list of people who understood that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Paul says, look at the track record of those who are, are in the Old Testament who would have been running this race and who recognize that this world is not their home. But as Paul points to chapter 11, the thing the thing that jumps out at me is the word faith. I said the thing that jumped out at me is the word faith. In order to be fit for this race, you must be guided by faith. For God says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, you cannot understand why God is doing what he is doing. Without faith, you will be miserable for the rest of your life. Paul says that faith is important for the race. Secondly, understand in order to join the race, the Bible tells me in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, that it is through faith, by grace, we are saved through faith, not of ourselves, but it is a gift from God. Understand that as we join this race, that we must understand that we do not deserve to be in the race in the first place. But it is nothing but the grace of Jesus that gives us this opportunity, Mark 16, 16, tells us that he that believes and is baptized uh, shall be saved. 
this is the prerequisite to joining this race. So Paul says that as we join the Christian journey, as we join this Christian journey, let us look at the track record of those who went before us. The thing that stood out was faith in God. Paul says that these are our witness. Understand he's talking about the track record. For those who are died cannot be witnesses because they are in the grave awaiting a resurrection. But Paul says look at their track record. And learn something how they held on. Learn about how they went through the Red Sea. Learn about how they marched around Jericho. And the wall came crashing down. Learn how when they were in trouble, Jesus showed up and said, and said that I am with you. Do not be discouraged. Let us learn, brothers and sisters, of the track record of those who ran before us. Now these men, and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they are in a retired state. They have retired from the track. They fought the good fight. They are retired and they are in the grave awaiting for a resurrection but now the race continues you and i have an important part to play in this race paul says that if we are going to make it that there are some things that we must do i said paul reminds us that if we are going to make it there are some things that we must do the first thing Paul says is to lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. I understand in the Greek, weight refers to something that we are hooked onto. I understand that this weight, as we look in the Greek, pa the past in the Greek uh, Olympics, that if you have too much weight, you may not be able to finish not even one lap. You may be marking time, if you please. But Paul says he was particular. There are things that we are hooked onto. We must lay them off. We must lay off the late night browsing. We must... Lay off the ungodly music. We must lay off seeking to get rich. We must lay off pride. We must lay off anything by all means necessary that may hold us back. I don't know what you are holding on to. But anything that you are holding on to that is not that that prevents you from praying that presents you from gaining spiritual strength then you must lay it off for it is keeping you back paul says it is a weight and you need to lay it off uh, mind you viewers mind you saints of god that you might have to lay off even some friends who are influencing you in the wrong way if you have to lay them off in order to gain eternal life paul says that you must by all means necessary by the grace of god through personal effort through un unity with god lay off all these weight then paul says not only the weight but lay off every sin which easily beset us. There is a difference between laying off weight and getting rid of the sin. Paul is particular. He was not speaking about every sin. 
in uh, uh, in this context, but he is saying that there are some sins that we have easily access to. All sin separates us from God, and we ought to put it away. But Paul is saying that there is a sin, the sin that easily besets us, that is readily available to us. Paul says we need to, 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 to get rid and to be free of that sin every time you pray, asking God for strength to help you from this sin. You just keep going back to it. I've listened to the testimony of my brother. It is like an addiction. You just can't seem to, to, to put it aside. You pray and fast and sometimes you just keep going back to it. But Paul says that you need to be careful because the race uh, we cannot run unless we get rid of the weight and the sin that easily cause us to be separated from God. Paul says to lay it aside. I don't know what sin that easily besets you. Maybe it's adultery. Paul says put it away. Maybe it's fornication. Paul says to put it away. It may be witchcraft for others. Self-ambition for others, drunkenness. For some, it might be hatred. For others, it might be discord. For some, it might be jealousy. For others, it may be envy. For others, it may be party goers. The Bible tells me in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, that anyone who engages in sin, who holds on to sin, will not enter into heaven. In other words, if we hold on to the sin or any sin that separates us from God, it means that we are running a different race. If we hold on to the sin, to any sin that separates us from God, we are running a different race. The race that we are running if we hold on to sin might be a race that Satan would have got would have would have placed before you and say, run. When you hold on to sin, you are running Satan's race, and you may feel as though there are no obstacles. Because sin seems to be something sweet. That you just keep doing it over and over. Paul call it the sin. But the Bible says that we ought to lay it aside. Every weight and the sin that is easily available to you. And I thank God. That the text did not end there. We're still in verse 1 of chapter 12. He says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I'll read that again for emphasis sake. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. First, Paul made mention of faith. Then he says, as you join the race, by accepting Christ, you now have faith in him. But then as you run, you need to have patience. There are some of us who might be up here spiritually. And there are others who might be down here. We have one faith. We are in the same race. We have the same Jesus. We have the same Holy Spirit. In the race together. So Paul says, run 
with patience because he recognized as he uses the phrase beset us that in the race there may be persons who might jostle us. The Christian race. But then Paul says that we need to be patient. Because there are some people who are in the same race with you. Would rather finish before you. Paul says be patient. People may have to say about you. Christian race. But be patient. Because you are not running the race for anybody. You are running the race with somebody. So Paul says, be patient. As we run the race is set before us. I said to run the race that is set before us. In the Greek, it means that there is somebody... Who would have come out on the pitch? Who on the track rather and would have marked out the lanes? Somebody who would have measured the distance. There are some there is somebody who had measured the turn and decide which lane who will run in what lane are you following me? That person, Paul says, that is set the race before us. That person is Jesus. So stick a moment with me. If Jesus had set the race, he had marked the track, then it means, therefore, that anything that happens to me, anything that happens to you while you are running the race. It means, therefore, that I ought to look to the one who had marked the track. Follow me, somebody at home. Had carved out this race. The one who had marked the track and designed the distance is Jesus. He knows how fit we are. He knows that which part on the track we will faint. He knows at which point on the track we may feel like giving up. He knows which part on the track we may need for exercise of faith. He knows at which part of the track. That we would be in need of water. I don't know about you. But I've come to recognize. That as we run this Christian race. We should keep at the back of our minds. That it is Jesus. Carved out the track. So anything. Anything. That happens to us. On the track. Whether it be disappointments. Whether it be death, whether it be pain, whether it be sorrow, whether it be crying, whether it be mourning. Jesus had carved out the track. He knows what will happen. But he has designed it so that we would know how to run. Some of us have the inside lane. Some of us have the outside lane. The inside lane might be easier. On certain turns. And the outside lane. You may run, have to run a little harder. But understand it doesn't matter. Which lane you are on. As long as you are in the race. It is all that matters. So Paul says that the race is set before us. Then Paul says, look, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of God. When you get on your mark, when you renew things with God, don't come out the track with your head down, but run with your head ahead. Look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. In other words, writes the race. As the script, he knows what everything will happen. He knows why it will happen. But he says, keep running nonetheless. Looking unto Jesus. Don't look at your brother. Look to Jesus. Don't look at your sister. But look to Jesus. Don't look at your job. But look to Jesus. Don't look to the bank. But look to Jesus. The one who is writing your script is Jesus. The one who has written your script is Jesus. He writes it not for the ungodly. But he writes it for those who accept him by faith. As we go on our marks. As you hear, the gun goes off and we run this race. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. The moment we take our eyes off Jesus, we will have all sorts of borrowed problems. But if we look to Jesus because he knows the script, he will tell us when to run. He will say, when to trot. He will tell us when to sprint. He will tell us how to turn. The reason why in the race that some Christians have given up, it is because they fail to look to the author of the race. I admonish you today, friends, brothers, and sisters, look to Jesus as you run this race. There are circumstances that you cannot comprehend. You may not be aware of your future. But look to Jesus. He knows your script. If Jesus knows my script. And your script. It therefore means that he has the answer. And he is the answer. So talk to him in the morning. Talk to him at noon time. Talk to him when you are traveling, talk to him when you are crying, talk to him when you are in pain, talk to him when you cannot understand his dealings. He writes the script. Jesus writes the script. Then Paul says that as we continue this Christian journey, understand that there is a prize. Laid up for you before the race begins. If a prize awaits you, then why give up? Why not keep running? Why not persevere? Don't let anyone stop you from running. Don't let anyone deter you off the track when you come to church. You come to meet Jesus, not gossipers, for you are, your eyes are fixed on the prize. For if Christ, Paul says, he endured the cross, but he found it a joy when he thought about you and me. Paul says that people may say all things as spectators. I give you Two more months, two weeks to give up. There are some persons who pray for your failures. Paul says that the wheat, the Bible says that the wheat and the tear will always grow together. There are persons who might jostle you in the race, 
But don't give up. The prize is before you. So Paul says, run. Don't faint. Don't give up. You may be on your dead bed. But keep running. Keep praying. Keep looking to Jesus. Paul says that you have not reached to the point where you have to give up. You have not reached to the point, Paul says, in verse 4, where you have to give up. There is no race, nowhere in the race, where God has a point or a sign that marks this is where you give up. If your eyes is fixed on Jesus, if your eyes are fixed on Jesus, just keep running. You may feel weary of the world pressing around on you, but keep running. Don't give up. Are uh, there people who may talk your name, gossip about you, but keep running. There's someone who might lose someone to death, but keep running. You may lose your job because of the Sabbath, but keep running. You may not know where your next meal is coming from, but keep running. Sickness may be in your body, but keep running. Problems in your marriage, but keep running. Your business may seem to be falling apart. But keep running. I love Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run, mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, but not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I don't know what you are going through today. But the Bible tells me that we ought to keep running. The Bible tells me that in the race, in the race, Paul says, verses 5 and 6, as we run the race, as we go along this Christian journey, God will allow tough times to come upon you. But keep running. Paul says, whom the Lord loves. He will correct. Paul says that we ought to keep running. If God had given up on you, then Satan would have taken you. The reason why you are still in the race. The, though you had all those problems to deal with, it is because Jesus himself is fashioning you. So that when you come to the place to receive your crown, you will appreciate it more. For how would you have a testimony without a test? I don't know about you today, but I promise I endeavor that by the help of God, I'm going to keep running. I'm going to keep running because one, I have a track record of those who are faithful. Number two, I'm going to keep running because Jesus had designed my track. I'm going to keep running because number three, Jesus is my mark and my prize. I don't know about you, but I love, I love the track record in chapter 11 and verse 10, which tells us, for we look for a city which had made which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, let us keep running. By faith, let's finish strong. Don't give up, for God has not given up on you. Don't give in. Jesus is by your side. Jesus could have written your script an easy way. But how would you appreciate the crown? How would you know that he can heal you? 
if you don't get sick, how would you know that he can provide if you didn't have? Just keep running. Stop complaining about the pain in your legs. Stop complaining that you are not feeling your hands. Stop complaining about your headache. Stop complaining that you are thirsty and keep running in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus is soon to come. The race is almost over. And to my disappointment, there's some people who are giving up. But God has revealed to us today that we don't have to be afraid because Jesus has designed the track. So don't give up. But keep praying. Keep your head heavenwards. The Bible says when we see these things, that we ought to look up for our redemption joy at night. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep running in the name of Jesus. When we all meet the finish line, we will celebrate together. We will give high fives in heaven and saying that we made it. I don't care which position I come in when I got to heaven, when I get to heaven. If I come in last, at least I finished the race. I have run my course and I've run it well with Jesus. It is my desire that as we are about to pray, that you and your families will make it to God's eternal kingdom. Keep running in the name of Jesus. Bow your head with me wherever you are. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for the example that Paul has painted before us. Recognizing, oh God, we recognize that it is your grace that has brought us in the race. For we, even our, our righteousness, are as filthy rags. We are plagued with the effects of sin. We have no right to be running in this race. But because of the blood of Jesus that has made us free, we have joined this Christian journey. And we are running. Father, some of us have not the best track record. So we ask, oh God, that you'll forgive us. And help us, give us strength that we may not sin against you. Give us strength to lay aside every rate. And the sin that we keep repeating over and over. Give us strength, oh God, that we may put it away, not tomorrow, but now. Because we understand that if we hold on to any sin, we are running a different race. The race set out by Satan. Father, someone is thirsty in this race. Grant them, O oh Father, the living water that they may never thirst again. Some are feeling pains in their body. The sickness may linger that seem not to disappear, but they're in the race. Grant them healing. There's some who may feel like giving up. Leaving the church. But grant them courage. That they may keep running. Help us all. Because the author. And the finisher of our faith. Is Jesus. May we keep our eyes focused. On no other. But Jesus. Help us to remember oh God. That the things of this world. Will soon pass away. But, uh, but heaven. Will last forever. So help us to press on. Way. And. Every day. Help us to stand on Christ. The solid rock. For all other ground is sinking sand. We give our hearts to you. We thank you for the privilege of the race. May we finish it strong in Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And amen.